Um, so yeah, a big, big shout out to all them boys and boys and girls that have made it happen really because without them we wouldn't be here. Yeah, it's great to have you here. Obviously, you're a big fan favourite in, in Northern Ireland. This is a super stock bike you're going to be riding in the super bike race. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's just just a stocker. So, uh, but we're riding it both, and we'll, you know, the wind's going to be in super bike. It's going to be a little bit hard. Glenn's not only on four balls, he's on super bike as well. So, uh, but you know, you never know what's going to happen in the races. So uh, you've got to be in it to win it, and we'll be in it. So uh, let's see what happens. Yeah, obviously this is the only super bike race of the internationals that you've you've never won. You've won Macau, you've won TT, you've won the Austria Grand Prix. Anything's possible here, even though you're, you're, you're not feeling as good as you should. Thanks for the reminder. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, yeah, the North West 200 is the only super bike, big bike race that I've not won internationally. So, uh, yeah, it's something uh, I definitely need to tick off. Um, but, um, yeah, it'll be, it'll, it will be tough here, obviously, this week. But, like you say, anything can happen in racing. You never know. And you've got to be in it to win it, and we will be in it. So, uh, let's see what we can do. And the little... Swan machine. Oh, it's not here at the moment. It's not here at the moment. But it's it's, it's beautiful looking bike. We'll see later on. Yeah, the R7. It's the same bike that I raced here last year. The same bike that I won on the TT last year. So uh, the Swan have come on board, which has been absolutely fantastic. It's been great to work with so far. Everyone loves the bike and the livery, and you can see even a bit of the clothing there in the background. It's um, yeah, it's really striking colours, and great to have them back in the sport after 12 years. Okay, Peter, thank you very much indeed. Uh, I'll stay and bring in Philip McCann. I'll see plenty of you over during the week. Uh, Philip, uh, it's it's tough to come to the Northwest after a, a weekend like that, isn't it? Yeah, it sure is. You know, and uh, it's um, he's. I don't want him to go too fast because he's just a, he's the one guy who's destroying my records in the world. You know, he's uh, he's uh, uh, beating my Macau stuff, my Ulster Grand Prix stuff. He's equal, you know. So no, Peter's a brilliant rider, but he's a tough, tough cookie, and he's spent, you know. So him for that crash, that first crash at Oden, that was here. You know, I seen that one on TV. A big crash, and uh, the rest that we talked about was just normal crashes. But you think they might be weak, no problem, slide up and get up again. But no, I think th that will hamper a little bit. But the adrenaline is the best painkiller in the world, so that will override that. Uh, it's going to be really interesting because I, I, I believe, and he believes, or he wouldn't be saying it, these super stock bikes might just be competitive enough to be the super bike. You really think? The, the, the super stock bikes now are very, very good. Out of the box, they come with over 200 brake horse, and uh, you know they work pretty simple and good. A super bike is a brilliant bike. It's had tens and tens and tens of thousands of pounds spent on it, but it, it, it doesn't. It only gives you that wee bit more power, you know. And some people can actually get, as the TT, you know, some people can get their lap uh, battered together on a super stock bike than a super bike. But because here with the slipstreaming and the big long straights, is that where the difference is going to you be? You see, to straight speed. <laughs> you're, you're putting my questions back on myself, Stephen, aren't you? So it'd be so easy to, to contradict yourself here, you know. And it's going to be interesting, right? Those super stocks are good bikes and they will be quick. In theory, yes, the super bike should be that wee bit better. But if I was on a super stock, I don't think I would worry too much because the fast, fast man on the super bike, uh, all you would do is you would sit in the slipstream. You know, and I remember when I raced the Nortons back here in the in the Robert Dunlop and the Trevor Nation days, those Nortons were so much faster than our RC30s. But we just geared our RC30 right and we tucked in behind them on the straight so they towed us along and it was the best man on the brakes. And really, the Northwest is won and lost on the road. So a, a well-working super stock bike would almost be as good as a super bike on the coast road. So it, it's going to be interesting. Well, Peter is getting ready to head back out on his super stock. He's one of those riders, isn't he, that can race superbly well on short circuits in the British Championship and transfer it to roads. Yeah, well, that, that's a great talent. Uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's a brilliant rider. You know, he's one of the very few lads that obviously Glenn Irwin's here, uh, you know, the, the Michael Dunlops is here. So, but he's definitely top bracket of a rider who can adjust from short circuits to the northwest. And to be honest, when I've done my, my sort of good track day and my good short circuit stuff, it was, uh, it's unbelievable because last week he had been sliding that bike right off the edge of the tyre every corner. So he'd come here and he'd only go to the edge, maybe a little bit over, but he'd be in control and he'd feel that. So it, it's brilliant to just come here. And you heard Michael Dunlop talking about it earlier. Come here and use your short circuit skills straight off. It just it puts the pace up. So no, I've not got a rule about just yet. Jenny, how impressed have you been with what uh, Peter Hickman has been able to do in the road racing scene? 
Yeah, I think his, his mentality helps him massively because he's so relaxed and he just enjoys riding his bikes, doesn't he? And it just carries over to anything that he rides. He just loves it and he just stays relaxed all the time and that obviously helps massively on the road circuit. So just because you, you don't want to be going at it too hard, you know, you want to be relaxed and enjoying yourself. So he's all, already got that as a natural personality, so it suits him down to the ground. Like a lot of other people watching, as he kind of rolled off what happened at the weekend, but sure, those were just ordinary crashes. Really? Yeah, <laughs> yeah you, get, you, you get used to it, don't you, to ride it, it's, gonna, it's inevitable, it's going to happen, so yeah, it's just a, a standard run-of-the-mill thing. Uh, yeah, I don't know about that, I don't fancy it. Well, you're not fair enough, I've made a stop, are you? Asking the questions. <laughs> Back to the commentary box. Thank you very much, Stephen. Uh, we've got to go through the times, I think, at this moment in time. Glenn Irwin then set the benchmark at 421.604. That's the benchmark, and that is just over three seconds outside of the outright lap record. So whatever he says about just running around there, taking it easy, um, he's obviously telling us a bit of a fib. David Todd is 1.72 seconds off that top time of Glen Irwin. Dean Harrison on the Superstock bike is 6.4 seconds off the top time in a time of 428.019. Michael Dunlop. 7.740 seconds off the top time. He's in fourth place at the moment in this opening superbike session. Peter Hickman, he might be battered, but he's there or thereabouts on 8.8 off the top time in a 4 minutes 30.482. John McGuinness is in sixth place. Ian Hutchinson is up to seventh place, only 11.7 seconds off in this opening session. James Hillier is in eighth place. Connor Cummings, Paul Jordan rounds out the top ten. From Dom Herbertson, good see Dom out there as well on the 96 bike. He's in eleventh place. Michael Sweeney in 12th place at the moment. Adam McLean is 13, Michael Rucker 14, and Emo Castamo is there in 15th place. That's your top 15 in this opening superbike session at the minute. Yeah, I was just watching Dean Harris now. He's just on top of standing now. Some guys coming out of the pits, but he looks really comfortable on that super stock bike. And I, I don't believe he's done a lot of riding on that bike because uh, they're obviously concentrating on the, the BSB effort with the super bike and it being a new bike and stuff. So, yeah, fair play to him. He's in the top three straight away. They must be mortified coming here. I feel sorry for Dean Harrison because the, the super bike bits and pieces to have a team like Honda that are behind the game on engineering. Uh, Larry's down there with Michael Rutter in the pit lane. Yeah, Michael Rutter just uh, doing some work to the Superbike down here. Michael, a uh, little bit of work going on to the Superbike down here. You've already got the Superbike and the Super Twin Machine, so one or two uh, less rides for you this weekend. Yeah, yeah, just uh, sort of make my life a bit more simple. So um, this is the bike I used in Macau and, uh, yeah, with the FHO team out there. And um, finally lent it for us here. We put in Bayham's colours and, uh, yeah, it, um, the first two laps are okay, but then it started to slow a bit. It just feels... Um, like there's a fuel problem somewhere, I don't know, blockage maybe, or so we're just now trying to find it, which is a bit annoying. So you've not ridden it since Macau? No, first time, so yeah, yeah. 31 years, Michael, that you've been coming here, 1993 on your RS 250 Honda, I think it was, before you entered the Superbike ranks. Did you ever think that 31 years later you'd be still uh, wobbling around the course when it comes? Well, if you've got it right there, wobbling the, the case really, it's not, I'm not like on the old pace, but I still enjoy it. You can't beat coming here, you know, to the northwest tour. And the crowds, uh, you know, uh, going down those straights um, when you just do 200 mile now, it's fantastic. Um, yeah, it's just an um, amazing event. Probably it's fair to say that um, it's a slightly depleted superbike field with uh, the, the Hondas on the Stockers, and Alice and Celia, of course. Is there still a win in the superbike uh, tank for, for, for your play? Uh, no chance, you know, they're like these super stock bikes now, they're like super bikes, you know, there's, you know, I've raced one for a few years now around here, and they go just as well, you know, sometimes better, you know, and, um, just start up normally and ride them away, it's, when you start getting a bit technical with these two bikes, you have to have everything right to, to get the best out of them, so, um, it's a bit annoying this. Yeah, but maybe a, a win is more to the, uh, more of a chance on the, uh, on the R7, well, in the Super Twins. I think, um, actually, if I could see the podium, I think, uh, I don't know about on top of it. <laughs> no chance on it. Thanks, Michael. Well, from one super twin potential podium finisher to another, and I think Stephen has got uh, Adam McLean with him. Yes, Adam McLean is certainly in seek of podiums here this week. Uh, Adam, but that first session didn't quite go according to plan. No, we uh, had a small technical issue there, so uh, we had apologies to get that sorted. But um, no, instead, I'm just getting out and getting a feel for the track. It's like. Uh, 
the last time I rode the Superbike was here last year, and the time before that was here the year before, so it's almost like a, a yearly reunion with the Superbike, so, um, as I said, I don't normally ride in this class, it's more of the 600s and the Twins, so, uh, it's good to get out and uh, get a fit for the track and get a bit of track time, and uh, hopefully we'll get out at the tail end of this session again. Just how competitive can you be in the two classes you mentioned, the 600 and the Twins? We'll see. I'm, uh, I'm uh, quietly confident with my 600. I think it's good. Uh, the Super Twin just was a wee bit disappointing uh, speed-wise, but, uh, but again, we don't know until we get out there and see. So, um, yeah, hoping to be not far away. You've been so close in the Super Sport class before. I'm sorry for reminding I, you. Yeah, I got a what, was it four or five fourth-place finishes. So now we'll uh, we'll keep chipping away and, uh, and see. Uh, We'll say ideally the uh, 600 podium will be on the card, so um, I'm prepared as well as I think I can for this event and hopefully it pays off. The super sport races here are always thrilling, there is always drama. Just what are they like to, to ride in? Yeah, it's hard to make a plan or a strategy or anything because you don't know who's going to be in the next, how many bikes there's going to be, so uh, it's never a breakaway and it's never easy, so uh, we just have to make sure we qualify their bikes in front two rows and see what's possible in the race. And you're with local team again, the JMCC roofing outfit? Back with uh, Jason McCall the JMC roofing team again for this season, so yeah, we, uh, we did all well last year and... Uh, we, uh, we made a couple of steps forward, we got a new 600 and stuff, so um, I was happy to stay for another season. You have a big local following, we'd love to see you in the winner's enclosure this week. Yeah, I'd love to feel like a try. Man, thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Glen Irwin's back out on track, I can tell you, so uh, he's uh, making tracks again on the number one machine, having wiped his boot, a little bit of... Um, chain lube or some other lubricant that got on the gear lever and he kept dropping off of that and that's actually lads that can be a disaster for a ducati miss a gear yeah get it oh, over revish some yeah. the gearbox yeah yeah you could do that and also uh, they don't want me in an over rev but they've got limiters on it but yeah almost certainly new chain we've got on for this weekend and uh, you always lose some lubricant off of that chain initially when it first goes out still the fastest man out there 421.604 what's the absolute that record here it is been been 418 418 
Jones and he's 42 years old now. That's the other thing I've noticed quite a lot of, that the, the experience that we've got out on this racetrack is huge between sort of late 20s, if you like, and early 40s. People that have been here know their way around, know the game so well. You are 35, Lee. Is that a race age or a proper age? No, oh, I can see him to that one. I'm, uh, I'm a no denial. As a company, not included in that. But uh, yeah, I, I don't ever see the point. Do you know what I mean? It is what it is, and you have to sort of accept it. When you're ready to be done, you'll be done. Whether each John, John and Mike have proved that, that age is not really the, the issue. It's the fact of how you're feeling and yeah. what you, yeah. you want to do. But Fitness and determination and will to do it. Yeah, the dark, there's literally two weeks between me and that uh, handsome young chap, Dean Morris, who's pulling out of the pits right now. So. Who's moved to the other man to be yeah. relaxing? Yeah. Okay, does that give you free accommodation down there when you go out there? Uh, could well do. It'll be interesting to see how the, the Bradford and the Mike Accent combines together. That'll make for interesting uh, in five, eight, ten years' time once he's, once he's got the full, full Mike's toe. Let's go back down to the pit lane then, and we'll catch up with um, Stephen Watson. Yes, with one of our international competitors, uh, Lawrence Hoffman from Germany. Your third time here. Uh, how much are you looking? Uh, how much are you enjoying the event? Uh, I'm from uh, from Belgium. Belgium, yeah, sorry, you're Belgian. Yeah, yeah. I may I make this mistake because I have a German uh, ancestors. <laughs> so uh, yeah, but uh, I'm the third time here, and uh, I'm, I was looking forward many years because it's been a while since I was here. But uh, yeah, I'm happy to be back. What tempted you back to the North West 200? Um, I was here in 2018, the last time, and uh, so it's been six years. It's like a, before Corona, it's like another uh, level of uh, yeah. And tell us just a little bit about your pedigree. Where have you been racing this year? Uh, th this year, not much because it started the season. I just did uh, uh, some testing and then uh, uh, one endurance race. I like to get in the laps, a lot of laps. Uh, that was back home in Belgium, and uh, yeah, that's in fact it this year. And what do you enjoy most about coming here to Northern Ireland? I, uh, it's, what can I say, uh, everything, the, the atmosphere, the people are so kind and gentle, they're always willing to help, uh, of course the riding between the biggest stars on the world, that's really amazing. Yeah, how, how, how much do you enjoy lining up alongside some of these huge motorcycling names? Uh, it's, it's crazy to be uh, one of them, I'm like a little shrimp uh, for the giant whale. But uh, yeah, I feel like I'm one of the brothers, uh, the, the small brothers of them, yeah. What's possible for you here this week? What kind of targets have you set yourself? Well, um, for myself first, I want to enjoy it, uh, because I'm not on the machinery of the, uh, the factory guys, so, uh, but okay, uh, my result is uh, if I can get into the first wave, that would be a, a great uh, achievement for myself, and if I could end up between, like, 2025 20, somewhere uh, that would be awesome. Have you got uh, some fans back in Belgium? Oh yeah, loads of them. It's uh, great. Yeah, yeah, it's really, really great. They are in fact watching it live, I think, right now. And uh, I keep them posted. Uh, I have also names of, of a lot of them uh, on my bike. So uh, in fact, they're here without being here. Yeah, well, it's great to have you here at the Northwest 200. Thank you very yeah. much, uh, indeed, for speaking to us live. Thank you, Lawrence, from Belgium, not Germany. I get that right the next time. Thank you.
one bike, one rider in the British Superbike team this year. Uh, Steve Moss is down there with Richard Cooper, four times winner around this course. Yeah, four-time winner around this circuit, uh, riding in the Super Sport and Super Twin class. I look, uh, I'm actually looking forward to getting out there, Richard. Yeah, very much so. I mean, the uh, conditions have been perfect since we arrived on Tuesday. Um, it's going to be a short week due to the, the schedule reformat, but nice to watch the two bikes out of track this morning. They've got the, uh, got the butterflies going a little bit, and you know, very much looking forward to getting out on the Super Sport bike in, um, you know, in a short time. So just the two classes this year, Super Sport, Super Twin, same team as last year, a bit of continuity, which is for me is is key. Um, I believe in both my bikes are, are capable of winning this week. Yeah, I, I read you're, you're you're going for four out of four this week. I mean, you have to back yourself. If you can't back yourself, then who do you back? Um, we made four podiums last year, two wins on the twin, and then a second and third on the super sport bike. And I feel that was unlucky in both races on the super sport bike. Um, you know, it's a very difficult circuit to to master that last lap and perhaps I'm still not quite there yet but hopefully the bit of homework that I've done in the winter you know watching the the racers um, you know, back again and, and sort of learning from my mistakes is hopefully gonna uh, be a key part in this in this week's racing and you're with the the Russell racing team which of course have got some pedigree free previously with William Dunlop and with Ryan Farquhar in the, in the Twins. Yeah, you know, two great teams, two teams from Ireland, you know, what could be uh, a better way to reward those teams than with some great results. Um, masters of experience in both camps, you know, it leaves me in a position where um, I'm comfortable to go about my business on and off track and allow them to do the work on the bike that's required. And I know that when I set off down the coast road that um, they're, they're to the best they can be with those bikes. You love it here, don't you? I do love it, you know, I, I love the boat over, I love the paddock, um, I almost, you know, I, I, lo I love watching the big race in a, in a funny kind of way, you know, I don't miss not being in the big race, I know that's the one that they all want to win, but equally, I think it's more important for me to focus on the two classes that I've got and, and stay focused on them. They're all big races here, of course, you got two big wins returned to you, uh, you were stripped of them after a protest, but after a, a legal battle, you've got them back, I know you obviously don't go to court if you only ride the bike. But how nice to get those wins returned for you and the team. Yeah, I mean, for Ryan Parkour and for JMC Roofing, who I was riding for at the time, it was uh, a nice for those guys to get the to get the wins back. You know, I, I was quite accepting in that they've been taken away, and those guys fought it tooth and nail for me and for themselves. Um, so, yeah, it's nice to have uh, in the history book, shall we say, that I'm a four time winner, and um, you know, I'd, I'd like to make it six for. For Ryan, sure, that's uh, that's a fact. Hope you got the prize money, all right. Just touch the subject. All oh, right, okay. Sorry, I brought that up. Okay. Well, we, we'll maybe leave it there. Enjoy your week. Hope you get lots more prize money this week. Richard Cooper, I've got Philip McCallum and, and Jenny Tidmans. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> I mean, you keep, you're right. I'm keeping the prize money, aren't you? Yeah. Sorry, I would have said I was. I was only making a joke, but I didn't realise that. God. <laughs> But he's a, he's a fierce competitor. Richard Cooper's going to be a, a really competitive rider in both of those classes, isn't he? Yeah, he's another one of those guys who can just jump off a bank at Oden Park. You know, uh, I'm not sure how really rude by saying, do you know where he finished at Oden Park? And I even second. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. So I wasn't sure, but he would be up there somewhere. But he jumps off a bank, you know, Oden Park on the podium, and he'd come here, he'll be in the podium. And he's likely, likely to be in the top stop. St top step in that super twin race and four. Yeah, what do you make of Richard Cooper's ability to fabulous rider? Yeah, unbelievable. He used to come on any bike and he is fast. You, you see him in British Championship on Superstock and he wins. He's on this new sport bike category and he's win it. Well, he was, he was, he was due to win to the last corner and he came second. But yeah, you put him on anything and he's a, he's a winner and he's an unbelievable rider. You know, and it's it's also great for the championship and for everybody to have him in in the class because he's. He's a really good teacher as well. He works with the, on the Witham tra uh, track training days and he's a very good instructor. So for, for the up and coming people coming through, you know, if you need advice or help, he's one to go to. He's just he's fantastic. What, what did you make of his confidence levels there? Yeah, obviously he knows he's on a great bike, so that helps massively in your head straight away. If you know you've got a good bike, then you in your head you, just, you just know you can go out and ride, concentrate and focus on what you want to do and how you're going to ride and making sure you hit all your apexes and your breaking points and everything that you need to do to be fast and having great weather conditions just adds to that. 
it's hard to avoid obviously what happened in that super twin race and he, he got his wins back again and that gives him and the team just a little bit more added motivation doesn't it to try and do it again motivation and confidence you know he is superb he's a good good person and he, he just jumps on a bike and he rides and exactly like jenny says to have faith in the team to know that your bike and your team is right that's a that's a big big load off your mind then it's just up to you but if you're worried about the bike you're worried about the team then riding sort of moves down a notch but all he's worried about is riding good team and he'll, he'll be a winner again okay well that's it from us for now back uh, to the comedy box it's all happening out on track, there's no doubt about that. Davey Todd is the fastest man in a Ford 19.9. He is just a little bit off the outright circuit record. So the number 74, Davey Todd, you're looking at him now, is absolutely flying. And this will be another complete lap in a moment. Glenn Irwin now pushed back to second place by nearly half a second. Michael Dunlop has come up to third place. Just 2.9 seconds off that top time by Davey Todd. But Davey Todd is the mover and shaker as he drops it down the road then towards York and into the braking area, backing it in on the Milwaukee BMW, looking so good on that motorbike at the moment. I've got to say, Steve, impressive. Yeah, very impressive. Uh, Davey didn't for reach his full potential here last year. Had some tyre issues and a few things, same with the TT, a bit of confidence, I think, with the tyres, but he's come here and he's off the back of wins at Alton Park last weekend. Absolutely fine, loving the bike out there. And he's, he's a youngster by relative standards, isn't he? I mean, you're at 28 yeah. years old, he yeah. is at the moment. Peter Hickman goes through, and uh, I've got to say that uh, obviously our cameras are all the way along the coast road here at the moment, and uh, the, the action is all around this circuit. And they're lively. I mean, I've got to say, for the opening Superbike session, I know the sun's out and it gets everybody in a good mood for it, Lee, but these guys have really come out of the box fighting. Yeah, definitely. Um, it'd be interesting to see what this lap is with DV. He put that fastest lap in one lap ago. He's had a lap off and he's just gone again there now, which we've seen the first part of the lap. So we'll try and follow that round towards the end of the lap and see if it can go, uh, it can go even quicker again. John McGuinness in sixth place at the moment. He's 9.7 seconds off, but he looks like he's in his armchair and just having a Sunday. He's not shift himself around as much as uh, he probably would but then Johnson he's old school he knows this doesn't mean a lot he'll want to get away in the front group which he will he'll probably be second third row maybe fourth row possibly uh, and, and realistically John McGuinness will be going at his pace he knows full well that albeit this is its own race back to Richard Coop there the TT is his real bag. Lee, I mean, you've been watching this all the way through. It's somewhat frustrating, isn't it, to, to see the times, to see how and who's doing what on a super stock bike, on a super bike. Who's impressed you so far? I think, honestly, the, obviously the Honda boys, because I don't believe Dean will have done a lot of time on that bike. And probably as well as Peter Hickman, Pete's a super bike rider, so the both of them guys probably haven't really sat on these super stock bikes a whole lot. Davey and, Davey and Glenn are obviously going really well, and Michael said he's just built this bike, so how much time he spent on that one either. So yeah, the whole top five or six are, are obviously pushing quite hard and within decent lap times so for the first session of the first day to be, to be what is he, 0.6 or something off the yeah, lap record? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's, Dave, he did come here, and I read somewhere, I heard him say, I've come here to uh, upset Glenn Irwin with his superbike wins. And looking at those times now, there's no question that Glenn probably would have thought that that time would do the job. You've got two totally different characters in Dave, David Todd is Mr. Laidback, sort of surf dude-ish, and you've got Glenn Irwin, who's intense in the extreme most of the time. And uh, I've got to say, then you've got Michael, uh, Michael Dunlop, who, what category? He, 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 he reminds me of, he's like the Ronnie O'Sullivan of motorcycle racing. He's kind of like, don't give, or don't appear to give, two hoops for one of them in a phrase. Yeah, I, was say, I thought it was going to start with an X. <laughs> it very nearly was. I, uh, I'll have to race against all these guys, so I'm not really going to comment on this uh, to be who you're comparing them to. They look, they look like they're all, they're all really nice guys and really good at their job. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be back, Ben. I am. Uh, uh, guaranteed that. Hopefully. Michael Dunlop, we're looking at on the number six machine then, and uh, he's going to have to work quite hard to get up to speed. The man from Balamani. And uh, he's a character that does it his own way. He will be not cajoled into anything that he doesn't want to do or do it in any way that he doesn't want to do it. We're looking at uh, Michael Runner, 52 years old now on the Baytham's bike. And honestly, out of that top three, Michael will be the least bothered about who finishes day one on top. Do you know what I mean? He doesn't, he doesn't need it for any other reason. The other, Glenn and Davey, are, are both in uh, big teams that want the headline and the press on the first day. And stuff. So there's a bit more pressure on, but we're going to see him now just come across the line and see if he can. He's, he's definitely trying there with that measure. He's a dark line. 
to see what the lap time is on this one. David Tottenham comes into our box here over the line and goes across. Well, 4.19.9 it was. That was a 4.20 lap, I think. Yeah, yeah. 20 point well, Of course, some traffic around the course. Going back to Michael Dunlop, I'm pretty sure I spotted, I think he's got his handbars <laughs> moved down really wide. You're not watching this now. I did <laughs> see that. Yeah. He, is, he is pushing on. Well, I think he's just put. And the other thing is, you want to work out how that tyre is going to stick at this kind of pace. And there's not that much testing when you think it's lap on lap. You don't get that many laps to make it work, to, to find out whether the tyre is going to stay with you. Yeah, just a glance down there. It's the only time, and Lee can confirm this over the start finish line, the only chance he had to look down at his lap time is that he was breaking down into that bottom corner. You don't want to be looking at it through Primrose and Bilbao, places like that. We're not sure how much Michael Rutter is injured or how much he's being... Uh, he's in the problem with his wrist. James Hillier coming in. Yeah. He's obviously in a new... I, I believe it's the same team, the same staff in the team, but it's rebranded and they've run, they've run Hondas now, obviously, off the back of... I'm maybe going to get in trouble by saying it's the OMG team that runs in, in BSB, but they're they're rebranded as the, the team name now, but on Honda Honda Machinery. So, yeah, James is obviously one of the guys that's I've been on the podium with quite a lot here before, and he's always there or thereabouts. Oh. So it'd be good to see him. <laughs> here he is, the grizzled old boy out there, you know, 60 years old, Jeremy McWilliams. What a legend he is. We'll call him a local man because he is. Check a flag is out, of course, and uh, banana time for McWilliams. Uh, whether it's a banger, whether it's a, a road race, whether it's a twin, it doesn't matter what it is, but Williams loves riding it. That's clearly somebody else's banana and bottle of water, because he, he definitely yeah, was not okay He saw the camera, he saw, he saw the camera, he put the Maltesers down. <laughs> <laughs> There's not an inch of meat on him. No. And he is still no, built like been, an aircraft. Well, he wing. rides pretty much every day, he does a lot of testing for KTM, doesn't he? He's out there riding all the road bikes as well as the race bikes and everything else. He's a good boy. We like he's to see Jeremy very fast. There, are, there is an older man out there riding today. No, Certainly one in the commentary booth. Well, yeah, there's two in the commentary booth today. Yeah. You're not including yourself. How is it that I've caught you up in age? I can't quite understand. Well, certainly in looks-wise, yeah. It's, it's the ointment I use, Keith. <laughs> you're, you're suddenly really making me really miss my grandmother. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what it is or the, the mood, but... Don't ask him if he knew her. <laughs> it's Keith snitching. <laughs> See, uh, it's really certainly not your IT skills. <laughs> See Richard Cooper on the screen there. It's it's different now for some riders. So the likes of Richard's just here on a super sport bike and a super twin. So these guys have all, you know, they're now got up to speed and, and had a good run round. But then the next session, Richard's going to be out with guys that have already done a session. It's going to be his first session out in the, in the super sport class. Conversely to what we were talking about before the super bike started, how lovely it's going to be to be sitting on a super sport bike now after just manhandling a monster for the last sort of. Half an hour. Yeah, you'll uh, probably do a lap for me to tell the guys if there's something wrong with the motor. It's, uh, yeah, there's probably a good difference in uh, nearly 100 horsepower. Some of these top super bikes now have probably got up to 240 horsepower, so a good super sport bike's 145, 150, so um, yeah, there's a, there's a decent difference in the, in the power. Michael Dunlop, you just saw coming down uh, into the pit area. So Michael Dunlop is finished, he's taken the chequered flag, as has Peter Hickman. Maybe Todd is still out there at the moment as this Superbike session is uh, being flagged off. Super Sports are next up. It's our third session. We had the newcomers first up this morning. It's a lovely day here, and I thought Jenny Timmons was bang on when she said, it's not too hot, it's not too cold, there's no wind, it's perfect conditions, the track's in pretty good order. And you've got to take your hat off to the way they're prepping as well. They? You know, they had all those dust carts out and sweeping the curves and making sure that you know, the local workers have done a good job of prepping the track for that first session because it ain't easy clearing up the usual detritus you get to the side of a racetrack is it? You have to think if we can do anything over here it has to be involved with tarmac so if, uh, we, can't, if we can't look after him and tee him some tarmac because uh, Michael Ratter running is that which is, oh that's a rare thing so is it someone dangle a fibre in front? Oh David Thomas was over it himself into the last I think that was a bit for the for the cameras there a good effort but yeah he's finished on top job done uh, first, first ride with the the Milwaukee team at the Northwest 200, so yeah, fair play to Damien team. Oh, 19. Glenn's still pushing here, is he, on a, is he still on a lap? Oh, I tell you uh, what, he, he is. Uh, took a lot of inside curve there, it looked like he was going to be on the line. Uh, spoke too soon, maybe, but he said, well done to Damien, this could be a it's, whole lap. It comes down to the determination to be on top of every session. When you just got three BSP wins on the trot at Old Park, and you 
you are the clear favourite when you come here. So over the line goes Glen Irwin. And then he does it. 418-553. Under the lap record, that is it. I mean, it doesn't count practice, but, but that he is... Looked, he looked fast. That's good, and you're right. I thought it would rile him a little bit when he saw he wasn't fast. He goes, he did look a little bit ragged, in fairness, but you are, but when you're under the lap record, out in your first practice session, as we know, the track is in its best condition. So, absolutely brilliant. There's the coverage that's coming up. You can see now we've got practice going on here today. Tomorrow, Thursday, 9am till 2.30pm is more practice. Then we start racing, 5.15 to 8.45. And Saturday, of course, from 9.20, pretty much all day long. Brilliant. Looking forward to it. What a lap then from Glen Irwin. He stuck it in right at the end as he took the check of flag. 418.553. David Todd, 419.9. David Todd might have thought he got it. But in the end, Glen Irwin took 1.35 seconds off of him in that final run to the check of flag. Brilliant stuff from Glen Irwin. I think he's just fired a massive shot across the bowels of anybody that might think they're going to come yeah, close this way. Yeah, but Davy Todd's still right there. There's the coverage on the radio, Todd. of course. We've got to just mention the fact that it's on BBC Sounds Radio 4, Thursday, Saturday, and, uh, well, all day, pretty much. So all the coverage is covered here on BBC. The other good thing with the, the Davy Todd Glen Irwin battle is that the guys are both on the same tyre, or the same brand of tyre, so there's going to be no thing at the end of it, well, oh, he had this, and I don't want to say what brand or whatever, just, but, yeah, the Michael obviously in third place, and Pete and fourth are on a different brand, and then Dean is back to the same same brand as the, the first two, so, yeah, that'll be for interest, but it'll be nice, the fact that if the battle is down to both um, Glenn and Davy, that they're, they're going to be on the same tyre, and it'll yeah. be the fact that some of the tyre goes off or has an issue with it, and hopefully that they get a fair, a fair battle on both Thursday and Saturday. Got a lot to look forward to this week, that is for sure. So don't forget to tune in to us across all the platforms that are available. And uh, Super Sport coming up soon. We look at Peter Hickman, he's out on 666, the little devil. Peter Hickman and the 37-year-old on the Trooper Triumph by Peter Hickman Racing Performance. That's his own company. It's his own deal. It's his own bike. So the 765 is uh, what he's going to be warming up to in a moment. And that will feel nice round here, I'd have thought. We've got another lap coming up. And uh, this time it's going to be with... Uh, Harrison, but before that, uh, Steve Watson's down there with Glen Irwin. <laughs> well, I'm with Ryan Rainey, Glen Irwin's crew chief. Uh, just how happy were you and the team with that? Yeah, it's actually a massive improvement to last year's uh, first night, so happy the bike was stable in a straight line, which is the most important thing right here. Um, that's what kind of our Achilles heel was last year, so on the first night we got it cured for later on in the year, of the week, but tonight we had the stability straight away so we could work on other vital parts of the course where uh, Dappen he made a couple of pits, uh, complained about uh, a little bit of chatter here and there, so hopefully we've got that dialed out. And, and nice to go under the existing lab record too. Yeah, it means the track's fast, um, straight off the bat, so uh, yeah, we're in the ballpark. And as his crew chief, how impressed have you been with how he has been riding? Uh, tremendous weekend at Alton Park. Yeah, we didn't get off to the greatest start in Navarra. We said we tested there. We didn't. We had the setup and testing, but the Navarra went missing. So we're all scratching our heads for a bit. But we rocked it at Alton, got back to what we know. The whole team gelled together, did the treble at Alton. So couldn't be happy with that. Um, and come here, he's, he claims on a high. If you may like, so he's he's a man to beat. And just what does it mean to the team to get a practice session like that so good under your belt after all the difficulties you had last year? Yeah, oh, it's amazing to be under that record. Where it's small things. We're changing not big. It's, it's, you know, he will have, uh, don't get me wrong, he will have a list for me, but uh, it, uh, it'll be small. You know. So the main thing with the superbike right here is straight line stability. If we, can, if we have that, we're in the ballpark. Good man to work with, is he? Disaster. <laughs> Dema you meant demanding. Yeah, he's good, he's good. So. All right, Ryan, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. So we can catch up with uh, Dean Harrison then, who's going to give us an onboard lap, and we'll uh, bring Lee in on this as well for a bit of fun and games around here from onboard, give you some idea before we go out to the Supersport session.